Hi there, my name is Corey and I work for Yodel Community Connections and we have recently partnered with your community to bring to life the all-encompassing one-stop shop community calendar. And the reason that you're watching this video today is because your community wants your organization's events to be a part of this calendar. So the goal is to make this all-encompassing, to make this the single website that community members can go to to find everything going on in town. And we want your organization to be a part of that. So thank you for watching this today. Um, please you know, feel free in the email that I sent you with this video. There are additional videos to kind of walk you through how the calendar works from a personal user standpoint. So please feel free to check that out. Um, there's also a link in that email to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me. So if you have additional questions or want to, you know, meet via Zoom together to go over a little more detail about the calendar and how we can get you involved, please feel free to use that link to schedule a time with me and we can go over that together. But what you're watching this video for today is to go over the organization side of the calendar. So what I'm gonna do is share my screen with you here in a ju just a couple minutes and log into an organization account on the calendar. And I'm gonna walk you through really all the different features that you can utilize on the calendar through your organization's account. But really the main focus today is how to use your account to get events on the calendar. So we have pointed your organization out as an organization that will probably need to manually input their events. Um, but I am gonna point out a few things that will allow this to be a time saver for you as well. So bear with me, I'm gonna share my screen with you now and walk you through the organization account. So we are looking at the Zanesville community calendar right now. And like I mentioned in the email that I sent you, um, there is a link to walk you through how the calendar works. So from a personal standpoint, how people can use it to find events. So make sure to check that out. I don't wanna to spend too much time in this video going through both sides. So we're just gonna focus on the organization side and how we can get your events on here. So when you log into your account on the community calendar, you are gonna land on this dashboard. And this is where you can check out all the data and analytics behind your events on the calendar. So you can of course see how many upcoming events you have and you can use this little drop down to you know, specify the date range that you'd like to see, whether it be today, this month, this year. You can also see how many people are viewing your events, how many people are viewing your schedules on the calendar, and how many people are favoriting your schedule. So once you have your very first favorite or hopefully multiple favorites, this will turn into a bar chart to show you the numbers there. And before I go into anything further in the account, I really want to highlight what that favoriting feature is. So if you were a part of the webinar a couple of weeks ago, you already have a good idea of what that favoriting feature is. But for those who weren't a part of the webinar or for those who just need a reminder, that favoriting feature is going to be the holy grail for you as an organization on the calendar. So to back up a little bit, as you can see, there are things on the calendar that we call schedules. And in order to get your events on the calendar, you have to have them attached to a schedule. And essentially you could think of it like um, a category, if you will. Um, so those schedules are able to be favorited. So there's a red heart on every single schedule on the calendar that people can click to get it to their favorites. And once this happens, promotion for your events are much simpler. So when somebody favorites your schedule, they are going to get an email every single week that has to do with all of their favorite schedules, including yours. They are gonna be notified every single time you add a new event, or if you make changes to an event, they're gonna be notified. So really your event promotion becomes as simple as just putting it on the calendar because you have that direct line of communication to those favoriters. But of course, people that even don't favorite your schedule will still be able to come across your events on the calendar as well, which is awesome. So as an organization, I highly recommend, you know, making that your main focus. If you really want this to be something that benefits your organization for free, you know, I really recommend pushing that favorite button, um, getting your constituents to favorite you. And it's very similar to having someone follow you on social media as well. So 
Again, this is the dashboard where you're going to see all the analytics. This is going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to add additional stats to it. And, you know, please feel free to reach out to us if there's anything that you would like to see. We're always willing to hear that feedback um, and potentially put it into action if we can. So please don't hesitate to share any feedback that you can when it comes to this dashboard or, or anything else on the calendar. So I want to show you kind of the, the two pages where you're probably going to be spending a lot of your time when putting events in on the calendar. So you have the planner page, and then you also have the my schedules page. And where you prefer to spend your time is really just what view you prefer. So when you're putting in events on a calendar, if you prefer an actual calendar view, then I'd recommend using the planner page. This is the page that I use as well to input events on the calendar. I just prefer looking at a, at a calendar itself. So here you can easily select any, any date and you can add an event to it right from here by clicking that button. You can easily add a new schedule straight from this button here, add a new event. Um, and just so you're aware as well, because you can't have an event on the calendar without first having a schedule, when you first log in here, the new event button will not be available to you until you create that first schedule. So just an FYI there, once you've created your schedules, you're going to see them over here on the right hand side. You can select which ones you want to see. You know, if I only want to see my content creation day, I can easily click on that to see, oh, I had an event on September 6th. And I can click on that to get more information. Organizations as well have the opportunity to favorite schedules. So some organizations utilize this feature to check for conflicts in the community. So if there's an organization in your community that maybe you don't want to host events on the same night as them, you know, we'd recommend favoriting their schedule so that you can always check this planner page and see if they're hosting an event next Saturday so that you avoid that date. So definitely an opportunity there for you to utilize that favorite feature as an organization. So before I go into how to create schedules, how to create events, I wanna then show you the My Schedules page. So you can do all of those features that I explained in the, on the planner page, but this is more from a list view. So if you prefer looking at your schedules in a list view, you can easily click on them here to get more information. You can add events straight from here, or you can add a new schedule straight from here as well. So while I'm here, let me show you how to create a schedule. So this is going to be one of the very first things that you do when you log into your account. So add a new schedule. This drawer is going to pop open here on the right-hand side. And first thing I want to point out is the difference between a published schedule and an unlisted schedule. So unlisted is essentially private. So if you ever have, you know, private meetings that are only, you know, invitation only or whatever it may be, or if you just have events that you only want to share with a specific group of people, you can use the unlisted feature and then only those with the direct link to that schedule will be able to access it on the calendar. No one else will be able to see it. But for this purpose, we're going to use published. And then of course, you just walk through all of these different fields. Very simple. So put in a name for the schedule, a primary location, the schedule description and the schedule image are huge. So these are things that the users are going to be front and center for the user every single time they're on the calendar. So the image, of course, is going to show in this box here. The description will show right here for the users as well. So you want to use something that's going to catch their eye, you know, that's colorful, maybe has actual people in the image, or maybe it's an image from an event that you hosted in the past. And then in the description, you really want to be promotional and use it as a tool to maybe get people to favorite your schedules. Let them give them a little hint of, you know, the types of events you have. Let them know about the type of organization you are, what you stand for, and why they should favorite your schedule to stay in the know about all the things you have going on. So definitely use that as a promotional opportunity. Once you've added both of those, the next thing you'll do is select a category. So each schedule has to be attached to at least one category on the calendar. We utilize that to allow people to easily find you on the calendar. And you can select up to two as well. So you can scroll through here and pick whatever fits best for your schedule and events. And then of course you can add in tags as well. So we utilize these tags to help um, run our search. So when people are searching for things like fun event, or if they're searching for things like kid, kid friendly, you know, 
putting in things like that, that you feel your, you know, people that are coming to your events might search for using those as tags so that they can easily find you when they're searching for those things on the calendar. And then of course, always, always, always putting your URL to your website on here as well. We know that that visitation to your website is important. You know, of course we know that and we want to encourage that and allow you that opportunity. So please on every single schedule, every single event, put your the link back to your website on here. Um, you can also put a link back to your Facebook page too, if that's what you use as your website. And then for this purpose, you would just be creating events right in this program. So you'd select that. If all these fields were filled in, we would save it. And then we would immediately be prompted to create an, the first event on that schedule. So a drawer would pop up just like the schedule drawer did, create new event. And again, you just walk through the field just like any other event creation on a calendar. So of course, putting in a name. One thing I wanna highlight here is that if you have multiple schedules, and I'm gonna go into really how to determine that if you should or shouldn't have multiple schedules here in just a second. But let's say in this case, you had two or more schedules. If you're creating an event that you feel might fall under both of those categories, then you can add it to both and the system will treat it as the same event. So that is an option. But of course, you'd select the date and time, put a location for the event. Same thing with the description and the image, make it promotional. And then those tags and the website that you put on the schedule will automatically pull over to that event as well. You can add additional ones. Here, if you'd like to, you can change the URL if you'd like to as well. But if you're going to just repeat it, we've already handled that for you. Two things I want to point out before I go into the number of schedules you should have. I want to point out that we do have the option to do recurring events. So if they're weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever they may be, you do have that option. But you also have the option for what we call a copied event or a copy event. So the example that I like to use for this is, you know, a lot of churches host blood drives often, but they're, they might always be on different days of the week. Um, they might not be on a recurring string, but they're always in the same place. They're always at the same time. So if you ever have events like that, highly recommend using the copy event feature to save you a lot of time. So what you can do is hit copy event, and then you can go ahead and just randomly click all the different dates that this event's going to be held on. That doesn't have to have a rhyme or reason. And once you've done that, you hit submit. And then once you save this event here at the bottom, it'll automatically create all of these different events for you. So huge time saver there if you do host events kind of in that realm. But what I want to point out right now is what schedules are and how many should you have and you know how to utilize these for your benefit. So as a reminder, schedules on the calendar are what personal users can favorite. And that's your tie, that's your link to that personal user. That is your event promotion. So, you know, we want to be, we want to put a little bit of thought into those schedules. So what my rule of thumb is for organizations is if you're an organization that hosts maybe 12 or less events per year, I recommend just putting them all on one all-encompassing schedule. Now, if you're like a library or a school, you know, or a big entity that might host dozens or hundreds of events per year, that's definitely when you want to break them down into different schedules. And that's when you can start thinking about them as categories, if you will. So a library, for example, a, if they have events for adults, events for K through three, events for preschool kids, things like that they might separate those out into three different schedules because me as an adult with no children, I don't wanna hear about the K through three and the preschool events. I just wanna know about the adult events. So what I'm gonna do as a user is just favorite the adult events and then I won't get bombarded with the events at the library that I'm not interested in. So that's a way to think about it. You know, Think about the types of events you hold, how many you hold, and then you are the ultimate decision maker there if you want to separate those out into multiple schedules or just have one all encompassing. Um, and of course, like I mentioned before, there is a link in my in the email I sent you with this video to schedule a meeting with me. So if you have more questions on that or want to know more information um, or of anything about the calendar, please schedule that meeting. Give me a call, shoot me an email and we can chat about it. Um, our main goal is to make this a 
really positive thing for your business. We want to utilize it as a free tool for you to promote your events and in turn, hopefully get more attendance to your upcoming events and more people aware of the fun things you have going on. So know that that is our goal. That is the sponsor of this calendar's goal as well. Um, and we want to utilize that for you. So the very last thing I want to show you guys is the account settings page here on the organization account. So one of the things that you're going to want to do when you log in is update your profile image. This is going to be utilized in the calendar when we display your organization. So put your logo in there um, or any image that represents your organization. Typically, a horizontal image is going to work best. The size is 1040 by 585 in pixels. If you have any issues with that image sizing, send an image my way, I can help resize it and put it on your account for you. Um, but the other thing I wanna point out before we end here is this QR code. If you were a part of the webinar, you know we really honed in on these QR codes, but if you were not, let me tell you what they are. So this QR code is going to take scanners to a page on the calendar that is only your events. So it's a link specific to your organization on the calendar. So each organization has their own page, you also have your very own link that you could put on your website, you could put on um, your social media posts, whatever you want to drive people to the community calendar to favorite your schedule. So if you at any point, you know, want to utilize this QR code and you need help designing any sort of postcards or printed material, please let us know. Um, we can absolutely help out with that for no cost. Um, we want to help we want to help you promote this calendar as well, because, you know, what we've learned is the more organizations that are promoting this and sharing the calendar out, the more engagement we get, the more people using it we get. And of course, that's going to turn into more eyes on your events as well. So please let me know if you have questions. Um, like I said, there's some additional videos in the email I sent you. Um, to give you some more information, but um, we will be checking in with you here in just a couple of weeks before we launch so that we're making sure that you feel good, um, that if you need any promotional material, social media content, whatever you need, we can provide that to you um, and just making sure that your events are on there. So we will check in with you. If in the meantime, you have questions, concerns, please reach out to us. But um, again, I just want to say we're really excited to have your organization on this calendar um, and to bring this to your community. We are super excited to be partnered with you guys and um, looking forward to working with you moving forward. So please reach out if you have questions. Have an awesome rest of your day and we'll be in touch with you soon. Thanks.